So complex human experiences involve motivation. Motivation asks the question, why? Why do we do the things we do? Why do we think and feel the way we do? So you've probably heard about motivation in a different context, but today I'm going to explain to you how motivation is thought of by psychologists and other scientists. So motivation is broken up into five schools of thought or five approaches. That's why I've drawn five cartoon characters to help us explain motivation a little better. So in the first approach, called the evolutionary approach, this approach focuses on the role instincts play in motivation. So what do humans do to survive? What is not learned? What's just an instinct? So think about a baby. When a baby is born, a baby doesn't know what else to do other than, other than to cry, to sleep, and to eat. So when you give it food or when you put it to sleep, it's happy. And when you put it near its mom, it's also happy. Those are just basic instincts that all humans know. The second theory is called the drive reduction theory. And the drive reduction theory focuses on two main points, drives and needs. So a need is a lack or deprivation that's going to energize our drive. A drive is an aroused state. And that drive is what's going to reduce our need. And that's how we maintain homeostasis or balance. So think about the scenario. You're at the gym. You've worked out for about two hours. You're really sweaty. You're really thirsty. But your trainer says to you, well, you still got to do 50 more lunges. So she puts you on one end of the gym and she puts a nice big cold water bottle on the other end of the gym. And all you want is the water. You're so thirsty. But what's standing in between you and this water bottle? 50 lunges. Lovely. So what do you do? Well, you have a need to fulfill. You're really thirsty. And the only thing that's motivating you to fulfill that need is a drive. And that drive is accomplishing the 50 lunges. So you bust through those lunges and at the end, you fulfill your need. You get the water you want and fulfill your thirst. So that's the drive reduction theory. Now, the third theory is called the optimum arousal theory. And this theory says that people are motivated to reach full alertness or full arousal. So why do people pay the ridiculous $70 at amusement parks to go on a 30 second ride that's really, really high and everyone screams? What's the point of that? Seems a little ridiculous in retrospect. But honestly, it's to fulfill our desire to reach full alertness or full arousal. Who doesn't feel pleasurable and happy when we're aroused? The fourth approach is the cognitive approach. And this one is pretty straightforward. It focuses on our rationale and decision-making ability, like a light bulb going off in our head. And the last approach is called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs says that we're motivated to, to satisfy certain needs in a particular order. And these needs must be fulfilled from the most basic needs at the bottom all the way to the top. So that's how we can draw a pyramid to illustrate this. So knowing these approaches is a little daunting. So just understand that in reality, all of these factors are interrelated. They're not mutually exclusive. They're just five schools of thought that are going to help us understand motivation a little better.